Welcome Rangers and behold the viewing globe, a show about the latest Power Rangers news. I'm your host, Jerby of More Phenomenal. We might be seeing a darker, grittier remake of the Power Rangers soon, and I'm not talking about the upcoming movie. Producer-director Adi Shankar has plans on creating an animated series based on the longest-running kids show with a more violent twist. According to Shankar, it will reimagine the mythos of the first three seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which was originally shown throughout the 90s. He will be adding elements which made the anime Dragon Ball Z popular, which are the climactic, extensive, and well-thought-out fight scenes. Shankar believes that the trend of TV shows nowadays is that they have evolved into long movies. His plan is to drop the monster of the day formula that the Power Rangers has been known for in favor of a linear storytelling aspect. As for the tone, Shankar stated, quote, It's going to be really f dark, darker than any other Power Ranger series. It's well documented that Shankar is no stranger to darker, edgier reimaginations of popular franchises. In fact, he already made an immensely mature short film entitled Power Slash Rangers that he released a few years back. Currently, the script for the first season of the animated series is in development. Shankar projects that it will come out in less than 18 months, but it hasn't been picked up by any networks as of the moment. When asked which network he thinks would be on board with this project, Shankar answers Netflix and had this to add. Netflix is doing what every other network should be doing. I have worked with almost every network and Netflix just gets it. The world we live in now has disrupted the idea of what entertainment is and Netflix gets it. Netflix being Shankar's primary choice does make sense because his new Castlevania series, a TV adaptation of the popular video game, will be airing in the said network this 2017. In addition, the network has been the home to more mature programming for the past couple of years. No word yet from Netflix regarding Shankar's project. Also, it's still to be determined if the R-rated Power Rangers animated series would be a joint venture with Saban Brands. It's highly doubtful though because of Shankar's rather unpleasant past with the company and how Saban's target demographic are children. But I'll make sure to keep your Rangers informed for any updates on this story. The initial script for the upcoming Power Rangers movie was posted online. Available right now on Reddit, the 127-page draft was shared to the public by the user Zombiefucker via Google Drive. Now, some of you might be wondering whether this is legit or not. Well, according to a tweet by the writer of this draft, Max Landis, it is the real thing. Despite being tweeted by Landis roughly a week ago though, the Reddit post was made back in September of last year. Some people suspect that Landis is behind this leak. The speculation most probably started because of the fact that he was fired as the film's writer and was replaced by John Gattens, whose script was used for the upcoming movie. Adding to this, Landis is highly critical of Saban's Power Rangers as evidenced by his tweet stating, I wrote a silly, fun, goofy, retro teen action adventure movie. They fired me, and five or so writers later, it appears they made Chronicle. Chronicle is a movie released in 2012 written by Landis and is about a group of teenagers who found an alien artifact that gave them superpowers, which honestly does sound a lot like the plot of the new Power Rangers film. However, no confirmation has been made thus far regarding Max Landis leaking his own script. Another thing that you might be wondering is whether this draft spoils the new Power Rangers movie. Answer is unlikely based on what I've gathered from reading the script and comparing it to the trailer. Some characters that appears on both the script and the original show will not be in the film, such as Bulk and Skull, Angela, Zack's love interest, and Principal Kaplan. Other examples of differences are Trini as Jason's ex as well as Kimberly to Billy, Zordon is some sort of a tentacle monster, and Zack and Kim switches colors, which I covered in a previous video. I'll be linking the Reddit page in the description if you're interested in reading the script. As a fair warning, it's also possible that some elements or scenes from Landis' draft might come up in the movie, so my suggestion is to read it after seeing the film just to be safe. I highly recommend for you to read it though, since Max Landis' take on the Power Rangers is extremely interesting and does a great job in providing a fresh take on the first season while retaining aspects that made us love the franchise.
Fans of the latest installment of Final Fantasy got an awesome surprise with the announcement of new downloadable contents for the video game. This announcement was made a few days ago at the Final Fantasy 30th Anniversary event in Tokyo, Japan. One of these DLCs is the Magitech exosuits, which can be worn by all four of the protagonists of Final Fantasy XV. The suits grants the heroes invincibility within a 30-minute in-game duration and needs to be recharged for 24 hours before it can be used again. The design of the Magitech exosuits obviously drew inspiration from Super Sendai and by connection, the Power Rangers. The exosuit was supposed to be released on the 21st of February for free. However, after seeing the similarities between the DLC and the Ranger suits for the upcoming movie, Square Enix, Final Fantasy's game developer, received a copyright warning. To avoid any legal issues and after exploring all of their options, Square Enix decided to make design revisions, which means delaying the release of the Magitech exosuits. Hajime Tabata, Final Fantasy XV's director, said in a livestream that it wasn't their intention to copy the Power Ranger costumes. He stated, quote, They don't look exactly the same, and as for the copyright, even if these are our original designs, it seems likely they will cause problems for others. He also implied that because of news outlets claiming that the exosuits bore striking resemblance or uncanny similarity to the Power Rangers, it led to this massive issue for the game developers. As of the moment, it isn't clear who exactly gave Square Enix the copyright strike as the game developers simply refer to them as the Power Rangers people. They are trying to limit talks about the issue but apparently it could either be Saban, Lionsgate, and or Toei. My take on this whole debacle is that the companies behind the upcoming Power Rangers film have every right to seize other companies or individuals who are attempting to copy their ideas. However, there is a huge difference between copying and drawing inspiration. To me, Square Enix were simply paying homage to Super Sendai and or Power Rangers through the Magitech suits. Plus, the suits aren't exact copies as some articles claim them to be because if we use this logic, then the Power Ranger suits are a ripoff of Iron Man's. I find this ironic since Saban's Power Rangers is also influenced by other popular movies. For example, the 80s film The Breakfast Club, as well as Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, which are obvious in these scenes. On the other side of the coin, Square Enix's decision to temporarily withdraw the exosuits make it seem that they are admitting to the mistake. Furthermore, this whole thing could possibly have been avoided if the game developers ask permission first from Saban or Toei before creating the DLC. But enough about my opinions and let's go ahead with a power question. Do you think it's fair that Square Enix was given a copyright strike or not? I would love to know your thoughts on this whole fiasco so make sure to leave your answers in the comment section. And those were the latest news about the Power Rangers, links to everything we talked about in the description. Show some love by giving this video a like and sharing it. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Jerby Ranger. For more videos like this, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon. This has been Jerby from More Phenomenal, thanks and as always, may the power protect you.